But as practice begins to mature, the magic is in the ordinary things, the miracle of this moment. Gratefulness. Yeah. Which means yeah. that basically... I bet you, that's that your thing. No. No, nothing is ordinary. <laughs> Everything is extraordinary. Everything, yeah. There is a true quality to every individual. Mm -hmm. And that quality is very anchoring mm -hmm. and quite empowering. In that place, we feel grounded and very self-confident. We realize that we don't, there's nothing to fear because we are tall and deeply, we are tall on both directions, up and down. In the life of the Buddha, you know, he was born under a tree. As a little boy, he had this uh -huh. profound insight of compassion under a tree. He was enlightened right. under a tree. That's right. And he died under a tree. Under a tree. And you know, when I was living in Big Sur, I was very sad for a while. And I went to this grove of oaks on the mountainside. And I sat in this circle of oaks. And the oaks said, you can come to us because we are a community because our roots meet each other mm. in the ground and we can take care of you and you can weep with us because when it rains the rain comes through us oh. like weeping and so this this thing about trees and our connection and what they have to offer us i think in a way that trees are the equal in the plant world of human beings in the animal world mm -hmm. see what this uh, what they say in my uh, in my tribal tradi tradition is that there's three hierarchy of consciousness. The most advanced species are the trees mm. and the plants. The second most advanced species are the animals. Mm. And we are the third and last. <laughs> uh, there's some sort of sense in the human being that there is a supremacy in human languages. Whereas um, when you look at things from a different perspective, you realize, ah, oh, there's the language of the trees and the language of the Absolutely. birds and the language of the wind and so on. That's Though right. it's like a kind of universal symphony that one opens up mm -hmm. to. And the same, you know, with, in, in, in essence, I th I, you know, my sense is, is that um, language is a powerful vehicle. Poetry is the most powerful in song yeah. of um, expressions of language, but we haven't really let language do what I feel it should do, which is to liberate us from that sense of separateness. That's right. I live with 18 people, and we practice three or four times a day. We sit in the zendo. We serve many people who come through our mm -hmm. monastery. But in when you live like in your village mm -hmm. or in my community, you are working practicing, eating, 24-7, it's all in the same boat, serving everything. It's all, you're in the same boat. And boy, every time you look up, you're seeing yourself come around another corner. <laughs> 8, 10, 12, 14 hours of zazen a day, plus work practice and eating practice and eating in the zendo and so on. So, you know, it's very strict practice, but you can't escape. Trump Rinpoche talked about the wisdom of no escape. It's like your story of being buried. <laughs> You're there. And, you know, I have to be there because yeah. I'm the teacher. Oh, you know, I can't oh, escape God. because no that way. wouldn't be any good. <laughs> I mean, so I, it so makes real. me do my work, too. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, there's some quality. Um, I, I always say yeah. that the national anthem of the West is I ain't got no satisfaction. And that's what dukkha in Buddhism means. It's unsatisfactoriness. Dukkha actually is a squeaky wheel. You know, it's where the axle and the hub are kind of not quite fitting. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's not like just the big sufferings. It's that little, uh, you know, <laughs> not quite fitting. That's right. Like that. So that that level of unsatisfactoriness is um, so conditioned into our culture. Thinking but it's, the glass is half empty. The half, half is, not only that, Bo, but I mean, what is just fascinating is that there's a difference between, um, but only uh, a difference in view between uh, grasping and clinging and a sense of insufficiency and deep spiritual longing. Mm. You know? 
And it's like taking the neurosis of insufficiency and actually getting it out to shift out of the concrete world and to open it up into a perspective where actually what's being desired is this experience of unification. Mm-hmm. You, know, Jill, whether, you know what this reminds me of? They say that people sometimes who are drawn to getting drunk are really looking for the spirit in absolutely. themselves. You, all addiction, well, for me, all addiction is that yeah. is just exactly yeah, that. Absolutely. It's like when you know when you talk to people in AA, it's completely yes. there is a community of people who are bonded by addiction and by suffering, who mm-hmm. are claiming their addiction as, if you will, a step into liberation. Absolutely. What I, I want to kind of ask as kind of last question is: Here you are, you're walking both of you between the two worlds, really. And so how is it to walk this path between the two worlds? Is it sort of difficult? Is it lonely um, to, choose such a, to choose such a way? Uh, just think of it this way. Um, we are what we've chosen to be. And so it's like, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I realize that my whole life is an invitation. You know, something is being laid out, and I'm being invited to walk in. Whether it is rough or joyful, it doesn't make any difference. Because I can't, it gets to the point where I can't think of any alternative. What, what else would it be? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Do you feel that way, John? Yeah, I, I just uh, I just kind of do what's right in front of me. <laughs> well, that's and that's kind of what you know. That's kind of what he's saying. Um, and uh, in certain ways, it's gotten my life has gotten a lot simpler. And I'm very grateful that uh, that I have a practice, and I'm grateful that. I have physical health at this point in my life, and I can uh, be responsive. But it's more the feeling, I think very close to you know what you're describing is, um, oh, this is how it is, this moment after moment. Right. It's kind of, it's sort of ordinary. Mm-hmm. But as I get older, uh, the thing that I am appreciating is, um, some kind of internal, greater internal simplicity, you know. And calmness. Yeah. And also, uh, just as you're, you're such a great example of, and, and Bo is um, the humor, you know. The That's right. <laughs> Can't get through life without a yeah, sense of no, humor. Without no. humor. Oh my God. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. <laughs> this has just been a wonderful meal. Well, thank yeah, you for yeah, coming. Thank you, Nella Jama. Really, it's you been, are so It's really dynamic. fun for me because yeah. I, I feel that we are helping people, perhaps. Oh, yeah. And certainly you're both helping me. Oh, so here's to keeping the spirit you are with helping, us. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you, <right. laughs> Meal of the heart. Yeah. An extended version of this program is available on DVD and video cassette. Contact cemproductions.org or the toll-free number listed below. This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non commercial use only. Link TV is the only US network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs. Programs which connect you to the world. <laughs>